Hi, I'm Barb with KCC TV, and tonight I have the opportunity, finally, it's taken us a while to get here together, uh, to introduce you to a couple members of the International Dragon Boat Club. Excuse me, Boundary Waters. Correct. Well, you say it. Bound, International Boundary Waters Dragon Boat Club. Okay, and I, I can see the letters in my head, but then when I start to speak, I can't pull it all together. Mm -hmm. So the International Boundary Waters Dragon Boat Club. Correct. All right. So Dragon Boat is something that has been around for a long time, but not here. No, not here. The history actually goes back around 3,000 years to China. Yeah. Uh, when a warrior poet, and now I'm going to forget the name. That's okay. Um, that way they can't, you know, Google check yet. Right. But if you look up history of Dragon Boat, it's, it's pretty replete with information about it. Um, a warrior poet in China was uh, killed and Dragon Boat races were held in, uh, in honor of his memory. He was a romantic. A romantic poet yeah. warrior. There was a woman involved. I believe so. Yeah, so that's, that, that's a little cliffhanger for people. Now they're for sure going to go check it out. Go check it out. It's a great story. It's a great romance. It is, and I think anytime something like that you know, comes from legend, um, history, there's a deeper meaning to a lot of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And part of the culture, it became part of the culture completely. So, oh, I should introduce you. Greg, okay. oh, Greg Thorsted. Your role is with the Dragon Boat Club. I'm one of the coaches and I'm the president of the foundation that was formed to okay. help kind of support the, the club. Okay. And Lois, Lois Lundeen. Hello, Barb. Hi. I'm one of the coaches as well. All right. So. Uh, relatively new to the club, but... But, that, but everybody is. Everybody is. That's right. Yeah. The, so the, the local history of Dragon Boating, it began a little over five years ago. Okay. Um, this is going to be, you know, on June 25th of this year will be our fifth festival. That's hard to believe. That is hard to believe. And I didn't mean to stop you, but oh. I, I don't want to forget um, to let people know that that's actually held right in Fort Francis. That's correct. Okay. It's sort of Gap Marina in okay. Fort Francis. So it looks like we're going to start at about 10 o'clock in the morning on okay. that Saturday. And it's really cool because the, the chambers on both sides of the border have collaborated and formed what they have named peaceful border days yes. and it really is a is a conjoining of the two communities to help celebrate both Canada Day over mm -hmm. there and the 4th of July over here right. Right. and it's helped because there's community there's community events over there that people over here want to go to yeah. and community events over here that people over there want to come to and it helped really schedule so that you don't have to miss this one to go to that one right mm -hmm. right which while I'm on that thought one of the really cool things that we've just finalized okay. is we've partnered with Relay for Life in Fort Francis. Okay. So they will be doing the Relay for Life. At the same time. At the same time, at the same place, at Sword and Gap Okay, Arena. okay. Because in the past, that's what happened is people had to go either go back and choice. forth or they had right. to make a choice to go dragon boating or go to Relay for Life because it was held in a different area. Right. We've partnered with them and it's that's really going to work out cool. And that absolutely makes sense too if you understand what that venue is. Absolutely. You know, if that, the, the river walk there is gorgeous. Oh, it's beautiful. You know what else I really like about that too is when you talk about the two um, communities coming together, is Canada Day today has a Canada flavor, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yep. You know, our Independence Day has our own, you know, they're, they're patriotic on both sides. But Dragon Boat is something that really doesn't belong to either one of us necessarily That's right. culturally. That's right. But it is a really a multicultural event. And I know the event last year was very multicultural. It is so cool. Yeah. It, it, one of the things that I love about coaching this group, we, and we have, last year was the first year that we started a competitive team yep. with the club. We now have almost 50 members wow. of the club team, which boggles my mind because yeah, we can't get 50 people together to do well. it. hasn't even been a full year yet, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. And um, the diversity, the cultural diversity on our team is so amazing. We have a young man who is Nigerian by birth and is now a Canadian. He's going to school over there. He's going to be a paramedic probably within a couple of months. He good to have. Mm -hmm. Which is really good to have. Yes. He's not the only paramedic we have. Okay. We have another paramedic on the team from this side of the border. All right. um, Jones Samuel is his name. And one time at practice last year, I don't remember if you were there, we all went for practice. We keep our, all of our equipment on our boats at Sardi Gap Marine. The town of Fort Francis is phenomenal. They help us out a great deal for Lots that. Lots of support. Um, so we met there for practice. 
and it started to rain quite hard actually and really blowing so we all kind of huddled in the equipment trailer which is like six by twelve with all the equipment with all the equipment <laughs> yeah and of course dragon boats have a drum on the front of them yeah jones pulls out the drum and starts do, 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 do. <laughs> pretty soon we're all dancing in the trailer and having fun and singing and it was so much fun. It was uh, totally unexpected. Yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely cool. Absolutely cool. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of what he was doing was uh, stuff he learned growing up right. in Nigeria. Who gets to Where do that? Who gets that? to how, do how that? How else would you get that opportunity? I never Dragon would. boats just brought you all together. Dragon boat. The beautiful thing about that is too is that dragon boat is not it is such it is such a team sport. Absolutely. So talk yeah. a little bit about the sport if you don't mind. I don't mind. Unless you would like to. Go over you start. So, <laughs> for, for those who don't know, a dragon boat is basically a 40 foot long fiberglass canoe. There are 22 people on a team, mm -hmm. on a fully loaded team, um, 20 paddlers, a drummer in the front, and a steersman in the back. That's also one of my duties. I'm one of the steers persons on the team. Um, so, mo there's, there's, in competitive dragon boating, there's about four or five different classes. Okay. Um, the biggest one is mixed, and a mixed team has to typically have a minimum of eight females. Okay. Um, for us, we, we do that in our, in our festival, a minimum of eight, of eight females, but a lot of people have, a lot of teams have a tough time getting 20 paddlers and a drummer, because a drummer is necessary. Okay. Um, it's mandatory, I'm sorry. And so we, we say you have to have a minimum of 16 paddlers, but at least eight of them have to be female. Okay because otherwise teams will stack it with all big bulky guys and not that that is necessarily a winning combination. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, 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 the key to dragon boating is working as a single unit. Yes. Everybody has to be in time. Every position in the boat has a different job. Mm -hmm. um, the people up front are the pace setters. Um, that's seats one through three or so. Seats four and five are kind of a, or three and four tend to be transition. Mm -hmm. Five, six, seven are what we call the engine room. Mm -hmm. That's where you put the really strong people, diggers. the yeah. diggers, mm -hmm. right? And then in the back is people who are strong but also very quick. Right. Because the water is moving very fast back there. You have to be really fast to catch that water and move it. Do they have a term for what happens if your paddle gets caught? I don't know. What, they probably do, but I'm still re actually relatively new to the sport too. Well, this usually though, that I mean, that's something you usually learn pretty early. Because <laughs> it happens. <laughs> so good, you don't even know what it means yet. So there you go. So um, that's that's a basic team. Um, every every seat in the boat is important. Yes. yes. Every single one is important. And uh, you know what I what I find amazing having you know tried is that the teams are, if you've got 22 people on the boat, 16, 22, whatever, everybody's paddle is a different length yes. because it, it's reflective of your height. Yep. Yep. And everybody's body is different. Yep. Everybody's levers are different and everybody's range of motion is different. So when you can get that to work, that's what makes it so hard and what makes it so ridiculous when you get it right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you can feel it sitting in the boat, you can feel it like the, our competitive team went to two races last year, one in Bemidji mm -hmm. and one in Superior. And I will say with all honesty, we kicked some serious hind end mm -hmm. in, in Superior. All right. Like we won every one of our races. That's fantastic. Um, and Lois, about when, when that boat gets moving and everybody's in time, you can feel it. Yeah. Because it just surges. Surge. It just surges like it just. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. And even, it's rhythmic, right? Yes. Even, even today when we watched the video of that race, yeah. I didn't realize that we had a go GoPro yeah, on, okay. the, on the very front. And after it was all over, I got to see the video. And sitting and watching it, I found myself. Yeah, you, really, <laughs> you yeah, do. Yeah, that's and, intense. But that was very cool. It was really interesting for me to watch it afterward because I counted the strokes. And we had 75 oh. strokes a minute. And okay. we worked so hard to hit that. But when it's all going in, in unison, that that teamwork, that consistency, that every it's the most beautiful thing. It is. It is. I, I absolutely agree with you. There's yeah. something that you, there's I'm sure there's probably a Chinese name for it, a word that describes it that probably. maybe doesn't translate to English, which 
often happens mm-hmm. culturally, but yeah. that's a that's a very zen, almost hold your breath moment, <laughs> isn't it? It, it is. is. And then that's what you want to get to each time. Yes. Absolutely. And you don't hear anything when it's that good. The only thing you hear is the person that's doing the count of the drum yeah. and the sound of the water, the paddle hitting. Yeah. And before you know it, it's done. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's the best thing. It is a rush. I didn't think it would be so, I'd get so hooked. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it. I'm so yeah. glad you did. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, we it's are good. too. Um, so Dragon Boat Racing, you and I have had this conversation before, um, but not from the camera. One of the things that I think I loved the most, of course, is you and Annalie, just your complete mm-hmm. passion and excitement about this. It's just cool to have, be around that. But also, you spoke to the, um, the, the rise in popularity of Dragon Boat. Can you, do you remember that conversation? Can you share a little bit about I that? I do, yeah. Um, <clears throat> at the, so dragon boating is the fastest growing water sport in the world. In the world. In the world. At the last world championships, which were in Welland, Ontario, there was almost 4,000 teams competing. So you think about that, 4,000 teams of just Say of 20, 22, 22, people. 22 competitors, and each team brings usually mm-hmm. three to four subs, right? Right. In case right. somebody gets sick. So you got a hundred thousand people just as on just to play. Ten thousand athletes play. all in the same place. Did I say ten thousand? No. I said a hundred thousand. Sorry, you did. I meant ten. That's quite all right. But I got excited. Here, here's another interesting statistic. I'm sorry. It was better attended. Yeah. than the last Winter Olympics. That's what I love. There were more crazy. spectators there than yeah. the last Winter Olympics. Yeah. That boggles my mind. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. that's and that's where I get really excited and really proud, I think, of mm-hmm. our local community having this available. But I really, I, I also want to let people know that um, the money and the support and really Dragon Boat around here originated in Canada, in Fort yes. Francis. Yep. But what you've done is you have opened your arms to those of us on this side of the border as well, with no, no restrictions. Absolutely. The, the, the thing is, it, and Annalie and I both see it the same way, this is, we don't see it as two communities. Right. This is one community, right? Yeah. I mean, she's from over there and I'm from over here. Yeah. And how many stories like that on both sides of the border, right. do you know? Right. It's I, our culture. Here. That's our culture, yeah. right? Yeah. And you're right. We are very passionate about it. Mm-hmm. I love doing it, and I mean, I love doing it. Yeah. Um, I just turned 50 years old, and this is a competitive sport that I can still be competitive yeah. in. And they have senior races in in club and in championships that. I could keep doing this till I'm 70 right. or 80 or 90, as long as I want to, right. as long as I'm capable of it. Right. Um, that's, part, that's, a, that's a lifestyle sport, a, a, a lifelong sport, I think is what absolutely. I'm looking for. Absolutely. And with this, you can also have that competitive piece. Absolutely. Yeah. That brings things, things to a little bit of a different level. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know what, there's some people that don't want to get seriously competitive about sure. it. And there's some people like, me and Annalie and Lois and mm-hmm. a number of others mm-hmm. that do want to get competitive. Right. Let's see where we need like to go. I, let's see, I don't, the, the ceiling We're is pretty high. Yet, right? The ceiling is pretty high. Yeah. yeah. Like one of my goals, and not everybody shares this, but one of my goals is to bring a team to the World Club Championships. Yeah. Because I think we have the talent here. I know we have the talent here. Yeah. It's whether or not we have the commitment to do it. And that's hard. You know, I mean, I, I, I still have a jersey in my closet, I told you guys that, and, and was very excited to get involved, but just schedules didn't match. Yep, right, I, yep. You know, you can't be out so many places at once. Right. But I also think what you guys do, and I think you're even doing it more now, is you're creating more opportunities for people to really yes. um, show up and see what this is all mm-hmm. about. And, I, you know, you've always been tremendous about helping people see this is a sport. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know that you guys are creating more opportunities all the time. You have something going on now. At the local pool, or did yeah, okay. yep, yep. Um, so a couple of, and then let me back up just a minute. Yeah. Um, as far as the opportunities, so throughout the paddling months, which is whenever it's warm enough, the ice is off the river, and the ice is off the river right now. I just came by it today, but it, it oh, would be really cold. Kind of it would be really cold out there. Um, I and the way the winter's going, I can foresee us having the boats in by nice long season. by April sometime. Mm-hmm. Um, so once that season starts, we, we paddle three nights a week. Okay. Um, right now we're planning Monday night for um, 
Monday and Wednesday nights for our clubs te club teams. Okay. And then Tuesday evening we offer a free community paddle to whoever wants to show up can get yeah. in the boat and we'll Just teach them how it. to paddle and try it's, it. And then decide if you want to come back next yeah. Monday or right. Wednesday. And yeah. the cost is free. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because the town of Fort Francis is so great, they, we don't have to pay anything to keep our boats and our equipment there. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got state-of-the-art equipment. I mean, we have your equipment is no joke. Yes, yes. Uh, there was uh, a number of us went down to Pickering, Ontario a year ago this April okay. to do some training. And the equipment we have is leaps and bounds above what their, their club equipment is. Yeah, because you're new. Because we're new. And you also um, had a very generous... Yeah. Do um, you want to talk about that? Yeah, Ontario Trillium Foundation granted us close to $60,000, which bought, we had already had one used boat, we bought another brand new one. So we have two boats, yeah. which is really, really rare for a club our size. We have 60 basically brand new carbon fiber paddles mm -hmm. in four different sizes. Your babies. And, yeah, those are our babies. We, yeah. we are very careful, careful to protect no, no. them. That's your first lesson, this That's right. how to handle that, yeah, that paddle. For a reason. Yeah, yeah. well, they're 100 bucks a piece. Yeah. yeah. Um, 60 brand new life jackets, our equipment trailer, all the gear for the boats, everything mm -hmm. that the Ontario Trillium Foundation and provided. That. And the dragons. And the dragons, the yeah. heads and tails of the boats. Yeah. Getting back to your other question, uh, we were so thankful that Lois came on board as a coach. She's our training coach, fitness coach. Okay. Um, because as you well know, she's an animal when it comes to working out. Yeah. And really, I mean, anybody can dragon boat, mm -hmm. but if you want to get better, you... It's you, a conditioning you, thing. It's a it conditioning is. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's been uh, researching things that we can do to help stabilize and strengthen our core muscles yeah. to, yeah. to help us paddle. Yeah. So in the off season, we put out there, in fact, uh, Annalie, so t let me back up just a sec. Annalie does a phenomenal job on our Facebook she does. page. Mm -hmm. Like she's posts new things on there just about every day. I, get, I follow you, so I get it, yeah. And, uh, at, and then she does a really great job with our web page, which is boundarywatersdragonboat.com. Yep. Um, if you go to our Facebook page, there's conditioning and fitness stuff on there, nutrition stuff mm -hmm. on there, almost every day. Mm -hmm. um, so in the off season, we, we put it out there, hey, here's some things that you can do in the off season. Um, you know, all of the local fitness classes mm -hmm. and yoga classes. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of interesting to us last summer, we found out that some of our club team members either A, couldn't swim mm -hmm. or were not very good swimmers or were definitely afraid of the water. Sure. Well, it's kind of a big That's deal because you're, you're out in a boat in the middle of a rainy river mm -hmm. and we've never capsized one yet, but the day will likely come when we do. Mm -hmm. um, well, and you're a lifelong swimmer. I am, and I've been involved with swimming for close to 40 years now. Right. Um, so we came up with the idea of doing poolside paddles and mm -hmm. swim lessons, swim lessons and swim workouts right. at the Falls High School School pool. We do that every Wednesday night at 5.30? 5.30. 30. That's free except for the two dollar punch card that the pool charges for the use. I think it's three mm -hmm. now. Is it three now? Two. Oh, it's good. still two dollars. So, um, a bit worth it. Mostly, oh. <laughs> mostly Annalie does mm -hmm. the paddling practice yeah. and I work with the swimmers. Work with the swimmers. Yeah. So, because I love to swim. Yeah. And I love teaching swimming. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great for us to have it that is. opportunity with Greg. I'm not a strong swimmer. Right. So it's nice for me to have a resource right here that can help me to, to learn to be a stronger swimmer. And then we go from there to the other pool, we sit on the edge and we work on our timing and on our listening and working together. So. And you know what else I really like about that too is that it's, it's making um, more use of our local facilities. Yes. And I think any time that that happens, well, the other thing is, is it introduces all these other people who swim. What are they doing? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is mm -hmm. that? Right? I mean, it's just a fantastic place mm -hmm. to to you, just to have that in our community. I, I wholeheartedly agree. And we've been, the, the aquanauts from Fort Francis come in and use the pool right after we're done. Okay. And we typically run a little bit over and they don't mind and we don't mind. Yeah. We're working on recruiting some of those swimmers. Yeah, yeah. 
And they're probably working on recruiting some of you guys. Too. Well, they actually mm -hmm. have. Do they have a master's program? Not that, uh, is that the Aquanauts? Or I is that a don't know group? if they do. Oh, okay. I don't know that they do. Okay. Um, Either way, it's one, just a great. One program. of the really cool recruiting tools that I've used is um, I work for one of the chemical vendors at the mill here, and the mill brings in interns every year. Mm -hmm. And but they need something to do. As, yeah, That's they're it. all they're all from out of town mostly, and mm -hmm. they don't really know anybody. That and we've had the best luck recruiting mm -hmm. interns. And in fact, one of them that we recruited last year and paddled both races with us, paddled all summer with us. Yeah got recruited by an elite team in Wisconsin. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But think about the experience they take home sure. when they go back or wherever they go. Yeah. 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 And many times I think what's missing in our lives as we grow up and get into the working force is having those team sports yes. that we can continue to, to perform in. Right. And this is a great opportunity. We okay. all kind of miss that. I absolutely agree with you. And yeah. I, it, it harkens back to several conversations I think I've had recently where you know, there's things happening in this community. Mm -hmm. You just have to get out, yep. open the door, peek your head out, and you know, and see what's happening. Because, yep. you know, we've got the high school sports. You have some rec sports still, and then there's sort of a gap. Right. Of, uh, but there's lots, lots of there stuff is. to do. Yes. Um, and then you, uh, you become part of a group like this, and then you end up meeting other active people that exactly. are involved in a lot of different things. Exactly right. The yeah. friendships you strike and the connections that you make, it's its just fun. And when you go to the festivals, the people you meet, and mm -hmm. it's There's, really cool. Dragon boaters are a different breed. Well, yeah, yeah, in some respects. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, did I No, you? no, 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 I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase my response, because you're right, yeah. they are. Well, it's a, it's a very different, it, it's completely, I just think it's completely different. We've got it, kayakers, you've got a rowing team, right? I mean, that's eight people, but there's something very different about a boat with 22 people in it. Right. Yeah, everybody better sit still and cooperate. And everybody has to work exactly together. Yes. So there's, you know, there's a lot of relationship stuff happening in oh, that. Absolutely. Right? absolutely. And you know, what do you put aside and what do you bring to the boat? And That's right. um, afterwards, how much, how, you know, mm -hmm. how, how do you celebrate? Right side, left side? Yep, yep. <laughs> and, and you can leave your shoes and your ego on the dock. Right. That's right. You don't need either one of them. No. Yeah. Oh. Actually, I really like that. And I think yeah. that lends itself to a lot of different. Yes. Check ego, it's, check your shoes. It's, there's some good life lessons in dragon yeah. boating. Mm -hmm. yeah. There really are. Do you have um, a youth program, or do you like what's your what are your age groupings, or how do you play with that? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So we have to carry insurance for the club yep. and for the festival, and our insurance is through Dragon Boat Canada. Okay, um, we're registered with them, and their rules are 14 is the minimum age. Okay, and there is no maximum age. We've had people paddle with us that are well into their 70s, mm -hmm. and several of them are actually quite good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that's nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no. We have a very diverse group <clears throat> in yep. the boat. Well, I think that uh, you know the reason I asked that age group too is that um, it is a sport that is a lifelong sport that you can get into right now, no mm -hmm. matter what age you are as that's an adult. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, summertime, uh, you know, warm months around the falls and Fort Francis and this area can be kind of leisurely. Mm -hmm. But you know, I like the idea of. Um, you know, when I can make that time work for myself, bringing my kids along. Absolutely. Because that is something that you can all, you can all be in the same boat. Yep. We have mm -hmm. one family, and I guess I'll mention the name, the Luchihans here in the yeah. Falls. Father, mother, and son all paddle with us. Mm -hmm. Carson was our drummer in I Bemidji last year. Mm -hmm. He had to step in last year at the local festival, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. So, and he was our drummer in Bemidji. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is a huge role to play. Yeah. Absolutely, and it he, was. We, he doesn't want to drum this year. He wants to paddle. He wants yeah. to paddle. So yeah. I, I mean, he's how graduated. cool is that? Yeah, he's whole... ready. Looking forward to it too. You yes. Know, like yeah. when, when do we when we get the boats wet? When do we get the boats wet? A whole yeah. family that can yeah. go on a Monday or Wednesday or whatever night and spend yeah. the evening together. Yeah. Right? That's getting to. Unfortunately, that's getting to be more and more rare. It is. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. So anytime you can bring that back into the, and the other thing is too, I, I think the, the the venue that you've got over uh, in Fort Francis and the um, Sorting Gap Marina is such a welcoming place for so many activities. So 
if you might, you might be the only paddler in the family, but you can bring your whole family along. Absolutely. There's plenty to do. Absolutely. Um, I also know that you um, <clears throat> love the idea that um, from the uh, Voyages National Park headquarters and the landing there, people can, from our side, can also catch the Dragon Boat, race, Dragon Boat races if they can't mm -hmm. for some reason yeah. get over. Yeah. I mean, you've got that two sides of that river where people can enjoy watching the spectacle of Yeah, from Pat Roach Landing out by the Voyagers National mm -hmm. Park headquarters, mm -hmm. you can watch. They can come out and watch practice every Monday, Tuesday, and yeah. Wednesday night. See what it's about before they creep yeah. over to the other side. Absolutely. And you know what else is cool while, when you mentioned that? It reminded me, we had 27 people from International Falls come over and paddle with us last year yeah. that had never been across the border. Oh, you're never kidding. in their whole life. Wow. Which strikes me as I didn't know that's that was, hard. I didn't think you could live here unless you'd been well, gotten you know a stamp of approval from the neighbors. Twenty seven people. How cool was that? Oh, wow. Had never been to Canada. Hmm. And they all got hmm. back, they all came back. They all came back. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and that I wanna, blows my mind a little I want to back up a little bit because we were talking about abilities and, and desires really, right? Yeah. We have we have this year we're starting two teams. Okay. Um, because there are a number of people who like I said earlier, who want to see where the ceiling is, see where we can take it, take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And there are those who don't want to do that. Right. And we're perfectly okay with all of that. Yep. Um, I want to paddle on both teams because I love paddling and yeah. competing. Yeah. Some people are not as competitive as I am. I get that. Yeah. And that's great. I, I, I have no problem with right. that. It doesn't have to be a competitive. So, no, one of our other coaches, Sydney Shalifo, where she works for the MNR across, she came up with the term beer league team. Kind of like well, beer league softball, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's not serious. It's not. It's something you do. It's something to do for That's fun. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and it's going to be fun and we're going to have a ball. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to mention that that sounds to me a little bit like an invitation. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody that wants yeah. to come paddle yeah. is more than welcome. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the reason we do that every Tuesday evening is free and open to everyone. Yeah. yeah. Everyone. Ages 14 and up. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great, a great thing. And dragon boaters tend to like to have a beer afterwards. It's part of their culture. Or not. I or mean, not. It's entirely up to you. You can still hang out. Without without, right? You, you know what's crazy is we typically try to do about an hour on the water of practice. Mm -hmm. And then we come in and we put the equipment away and stretch and kind of limber up. Nobody and wants to leave. Nobody wants to leave. <laughs> yeah. we, sit, we, sit around, we sit around the trailer for 30, 40 minutes just, just visiting talk. them. Yeah, it's good yeah, company. It that's is. how you know. That's how you know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's more than just, you know, I, I got to run off. I know really I'm sure I have something I have to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I mean, it's, it, it, it's more meaningful to spend time with this group of people that you become close to. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. That's, yeah. That says a lot about the group. Yep, it sure does. Have, you have people from all walks of life that come together, but we have that one common thing. Yep. Right. And then you start right. to, oh, okay, and you make those connections yeah. and you make those friendships. And then you're out in the community in the wintertime and we don't see each mm -hmm. other. Sure. And then it's, Sid! <laughs> yeah, we don't have. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's, without a paddle in your hand. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, but it is. And that's bringing great. communities together. Exactly. Um, that's, I think, what that's really all about. And this um, conversation is something that I'm, you know, we'll, we'll be featuring on a segment that we call Be Well Borderland, which is about health and fitness and wellness and recreation mm -hmm. and, and really lifelong pursu pursuits of being active. Um, but at the core of it all, those things only work if it's something you're passionate about, right. something that you love to do. Right. Very true. And if that, that always depends on the people that you spend your time doing mm -hmm. that with. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's what supports that's it key. and makes it. Yep. Yep. Um, I feel like we're missing something in the conversation. Well, you just reminded me of one thing, um, the, the health and wellness and the active lifestyle, mm -hmm. which is something, you know, the three of us are really totally into and, mm -hmm. and being active all of your life. Um, Research has found that dragon boating, dragon boat paddling, mm -hmm. I know where this is, is actually uh, extremely beneficial to breast cancer survivors. For the recovery and the re rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And, and in, in every 
festival and race that I know of, one of the categories is breast cancer survivors. Yeah, yeah. Yep. These are people that have survived breast cancer and now they're out there paddling. Mm -hmm. Because one, it's fun, and two, it's good for their bodies. For their bodies. Specifically mm -hmm. to, to what they've been through. Correct. Yeah, and I, I'm try I think you're the one who introduced me to that piece of it at one point. And I, of course, went to research it, knowing many women who are affected by mm -hmm. that, who are in that category. And um, it's, it's a really beautiful um, way of looking at the process of healing mm -hmm. and empowering um, after mm -hmm. surgery, um, after a lot of things. So yeah. I'm really grateful that you brought that up. And I think that really is a nice way, um, a, kind of a nice tie-in, I'm sure, to your Relay for Life connections uh, during the festival this next year, this coming summer. What am I saying? We're so close right now. Yes. Yeah. Almost the end of the, February. Yeah. yeah. We'll be putting the boats in before That's you right. know it. That's right. I came across the river the other day and I looked and I saw all that open water and I thought, oh, Greg's already got it figured out. We'll be in the water. <laughs> A couple of other things that I was reminded of. We still have room for more teams yeah. in our festival. We're hoping for 16 teams this year. Okay. Uh, so that's a shout out to teams from all over the area. All over the area, yeah. uh, both sides of the border. Yeah. We have, I think, five teams already signed up. How many did you have last year total? Do you remember? We ended up with seven, I okay. believe. Okay, and um, it's grown every year. Yeah, last year was down from the year before. But well, there, was, but there was the year before you. I don't think you held it, did you, with all the high yeah, water? Yeah, well, yeah, but we had to postpone it. Okay, so that's and that. Usually, a hiccup like that can affect. It, and it did. Yeah, that was exactly what happened. Okay, okay. Um, we're going with a new production company this year. They've done the Manitoba Dragon Boat races in Winnipeg for 30 years. Hmm. One in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, for 35 years. Wow. Um, really great to work with. Um, so we'd like to encourage more teams to sign up. Um, also, we encourage the teams that do come and paddle to raise funds for their favorite charity. Right. Get pledges. Get pledges. Whether it's breast cancer, cancer overall, whatever, whatever is it's important to their team. Whatever is, the, yeah. is, the, is their passion. Yeah. yeah. And um, so they can do that independent of what you have going on, absolutely. and they manage that themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an opportunity for them. Um, one thing that we haven't talked about, and I'm probably interrupting you in the middle of some great thing, but I'm sure you're going to get here, is that this Dragon Boat Festival is pretty special. The only well, it is pretty special. Well, <laughs> but isn't it, isn't it the only... Oh, only yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. It's the only Dragon Boat Festival that's held in international waters. On the whole planet. Mm -hmm. On the whole planet. Right over here. Yes. Yeah. Or wait, where are we? It's right here. Yeah, right over there. Okay. Yeah. One of the right, rightish direction. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. If you think about that, um, I mean, that's that's something to be, again, very proud of. And um, the location, I just think, I, I can never oh. get over the fact that you've literally got venues on both sides. Yes. Um, that is just a super cool thing. It's pretty intimate, really, when you look at how, um, when you look at the distance from either side, um, there's a lot to catch. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it reminds me, one of our long-term goals for the festival is to have, excuse me, four boats racing. Mm -hmm. And the American teams, if they want to, if they choose to, can stay on the American side, right. paddle out to the start of the race, two teams from the Canadian side, run the race right down the middle of the river. So two on the U.S. side, you two on the Canadian side. You literally run the same race in two different countries at exactly. the same time. Yes. Yeah. And, and why wouldn't you? I, I think right? that would why be pretty really cool. Yeah, it would be fantastic. Um, Really most fantastic. most like like Bemidji where we went last year in Superior, they run races with four boats because yep. there are eighty to ninety teams. They, they need to. You need to. They you got to get them cycled through, and we can pretty effectively do. I think we could do twenty teams mm -hmm. with the two boats we have. When it starts getting bigger than that, we're going to have to get four boats. We'll have to get a bigger river. <laughs> we'll have to put in for a grant to widen the river. I was going to say. Um, tell me about the distance, the race distance. This year, last year we did 200 meters, okay. and this year we're going to set it up to 300 meters. Okay. Um, it's the we we paddle we get in the boats at Sorting Gap docks, mm -hmm. paddle downriver to the start, yep. and then paddle upstream to the finish line, and the finish line is basically right out in front of Sorting Gap docks. Yeah. So that all the spectators can watch the finish, and we had some really close yeah, ones last did. year. Yeah, we did. Like half a second Very between close. the boats. So approximately how long? I mean, what's the average? Uh, Time that's going to be about 
Between a minute and a half and two mm -hmm. minutes. So it's a really, really fast, yes. powerful, yep. it is quick. I mean, it's something that goes by quick. Yep. All that training, that's one of those things I think about too, but you're really building in that power and that efficiency. Absolutely. Which is why that training is constant. Yep. Yeah, it's a sprint. Yeah, and, and there are there are longer races in Dragon Boat. Um, we're hoping put to the drag do in Dragon Boat. That's to do, no, to not that's put, <laughs> to take the drag out of the Dragon Boat. Uh, we're planning actually to do some two K races this really? year with our endurance team. Wow! So I'm it's really big, looking. You're looking for some yeah, big that's shoulders. Yeah, that's eleven, twelve minute race. That's crazy. Of working hard for eleven or twelve minutes. But you, you cross that that endurance bridge and then you go. Right. right. So right. that's what we have to you work get, on. You get past that anaerobic yep. threshold Absolutely. and then, you, then your body's ready. It really, yep. you yep. can fine tune and you can for that. just go. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. So there's you know lots of stuff happening, lots of room to grow within the sport as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Um, I really hope that this generates excitement. And I know it is winter. <sighs> You know, and, and yep. but I, I also know that this is when people start to plan summer, mm -hmm. you know, plan events, plan commitments, um, and so it was the timing of this was important, I think, to get this conversation happening. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing too is, I'd like to have you back as we get a little closer. You know, let me know once you get the boats in the water, yeah. because. It's all fun and games in the studio. I mean, look, look at the fun you can, we're having. You can bring the camera but away, if we can, shoot some video yeah, in the boat. To really get people, um, walk them right into the process, what it looks mm -hmm. like, um, and introduce them to something. It always is a little less intimidating if you have a little peek at what that looks like. Exactly. So can you tell us again the, um, the team of the Cloud Rather website? The website is BoundaryWatersDragonBoat.com. Okay. Our Facebook page is Boundary Waters Dragon Boat on Facebook. Yep. And if mm -hmm. people want to contact us, they can via okay. email. It's dragonboatff, as in Fort Francis, dot com, or at gmail.com. And, you know, of course, I'll post on our Facebook page, our KCC TV Facebook page, with links for you. Thank you. So that all of that can be shared as well. Teams that, that sign up for the festival, we offer mm -hmm. them two free practices oh. with our coaching mm -hmm. staff okay. uh, the week before the festival. So you can learn what the basic commands are, learn so how to stay your group. Like you can get your, your bowling group yes. or yep. your red hat group or yes. your, yes. you know, doc ladies, doc, yes. you know, or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. your best, your besties to any one of your best friends. Yeah. Absolutely. And someone with a drum and some drive. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. actually great because that really brings the, the more, creates more access to everybody in the community to be a part of it. Not right. just show up, That's right. but to hop in the boat and have a little yeah. check your ego in your shoes and awareness. People yeah. go out then and they say, hey, guess what I did? I kind of like that. Yeah, it was fun. Can I do it? Does anybody else need someone to roll, you know, paddle mm -hmm. for them? And the, yeah, I, that yeah. happened last summer. Yep. Yeah. yeah, everybody came together. So, someone needs a paddler, there's someone to fill in. That's right. Yeah, and I'm just gonna say it was a fantastic time. It, it is. was a beautiful day. We, we worried about weather a little bit, Yeah. but the the, energy of that whole mm -hmm. place there's ceremony to it there's vendors mm -hmm. there's great food yes um music there's music there's new people to meet yeah. um it's just a it, it it's so close to home you know it's right here yeah. yep so it's uh it's easy to get to yeah. and it matters quite a bit to our community so keep in touch sure. with me or maybe we should start planning now for our for I'll our next, our next yeah, get-together I'll, I'll let you know when we get the boats in. And yeah. then we Just give me a able... holler because um, sometimes spontaneity is is a gift and that works a little bit better than trying to plan things. So we'll put her up on the drummer's seat There you go. You can video. GoPro and, and hang on. We'll go for a I just hold it in my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's fun. I'd rather paddle. Good. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. It is yeah, a it gas. Is. And that's, uh, I love paddling. I, I'm. I end up most of the time in the back steering. Yeah. Um, I'm glad we've gotten at least two more people, and we're going to train some steer. more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that I can get in the seat and paddle. Yeah. Because I. But there's that. a you know that there's a there's a doesn't the person who steers also coach to some degree? Or? It doesn't have to be. Okay. That's the way we've set we've, it up so far. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lincoln Dunn is one of our coaches from across. Yep. Sydney is one of our coaches, and mm -hmm. okay. I guess that means you're going to have to learn to steer. Sounds that way. Sure works. 
Always something new that works. Always something new. Yeah. And, and the more people you have that have that ability, the, it's the better you are. Absolutely, yeah. you're never yeah. in a spot. That's right. So, well, That's thanks right. again. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you guys again. Hopefully, yeah. next time there'll be some water. In the yeah, warm water, water maybe. Warm. <laughs> warm. Ice free water. Well, water's water. <gasps> no. <laughs> That's why you kept the hat on. Yeah. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. This was good. It was good.